Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day this video happens to find you at. Clarence, he's very distracting. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today was awesome book, Radical Simplicity by Jim Merkel. I think I'm saying his last name. Probably am. Um, anyways, Radical Simplicity is awesome book. If you haven't read it, get it, check it out from the library, borrow it from a friend, buy it. Um, I had read it maybe four, five years ago, maybe more, um, and it really kind of stuck in my mind for a while, and I thought about making some changes, but just after, um, I don't know, I just keep developing a... different philosophy, mindset, perspective when it comes to the impact that I'm having on the world, good or bad, um, includes everything. And this book is really, if you're wanting to be more environmentally conscious, if you're wanting to reduce your impact on the earth, so, you know, <laughs> it's livable in the future and for, you know, generations going forward, then um, I highly recommend checking this book out. Um, so, the author, Jim Merkel, his backstory is super fascinating. He was actually a, um, a weapons developer, manufacturer, engineer. And he came to this realization, um, you know, that he was seeing all this harm being done with these, you know, weapons he was manufacturing. And even to a different extent, his tax dollars were going to support that death and destruction as well as ours are right now. So he's like, hmm. And it's creating, you know, all this environmental destruction, um, and you know, all these, all these other things that go into the military industrial complex and all the other um, environmental problems that are having due to our, you know, overconsumption of the Earth's resources, especially us, um, you know, in these first world or you know, so-called developed countries. Um, and so he wanted to make a radical shift in his life. So he took about doing all these types of um, experiments. He even went to uh, the state in India to see how they live because the Kerala, let's see, did I make a note of, I believe it was, Kerala, the, the state in India, something like that. But anyways, he even traveled over there to go see how they live because they, they have some pretty high, ouch, um, just overall kind of um, health and kind of these other indicators to show that a society has a pretty high quality of life, even though they make substantially um, less than, you know, us, or I should say here in the United States where I live um, currently, but they had, so he went over there and he found out they all, you know, make uh, like the, the coconut, all the things that they do with the coconut, they grow their own food, they walk a lot, they're connected, they're, they're happy, they have a good um, kind of work-life balance, um, you know, you can get a haircut for 10 cents and the guy or the person giving you the haircut can still make a living doing that because they live in such a localized economy he does the person doing the haircut doesn't have you know a lot of overhead there's not a, a lot of licenses or taxes or anything like that it's just very interesting and then so he comes back to the united states and tries to 
adopt as many of these practices as he can for his context to limit his impact on the earth. So it was something like the average North American to support their lifestyle. They need about 24 acres of land to, to live on per person to support that lifestyle each year. And that's super unsustainable because in order for us to just even, you know, use an amount of the Earth's resources where it just stays, you know, at the same same rate as it is. So basically, we use a certain amount, but that certain amount gets replaced. Um, we would need to each use about 4.7 acres. So you can see we need to make a, a drastic re reduction in the amount of um, resources that we consume as North Americans, as Europeans to a certain extent, a little less, um, you know, because it's us in these developed countries that are destroying them, destroying the planet. We only have one. There's not another one we can go to. Um, and I you know, the onus, the burden is on us with all of these privileges, with the ability to voluntarily <laughs> take a, um, you know, step back from all of this materialism, this overconsumption. It's not, it's not helping us. It's not serving us. It's not serving the planet. And if it's not serving the planet, it's not serving us. We can't survive without the planet. So we need to do what's best for the planet. Um, just selfishly and because like it's such an amazing place when you need to take care of it um but it's like there's really like simple things um you know that we that we can do um and then yeah it's just a super fascinating book and topic and has me really inspired right now to change my ways, um, I'm gonna, gonna get away from using the car even more. A um, little harder this time of year, but um, in the in the future warm months and times, I'll definitely do that more. Um, getting rid of away from plastic, it's so bad. It just lasts more or less forever. I mean, it does break down over time, but then you're left with all these small particles that are just horrible for wildlife and just the general you know environment ecosystem um yeah so getting away i mean these are all things that we can do it's like okay drive less everybody can do that unless you're already getting around from other ways then awesome i'm working towards that drive less ride your bike more that goes to the first one you'd be driving less if you rode your bike more such a great way to to travel to explore to adventure there's so much freedom on it there's no insurance there's no gas very little in the way of maintenance or upkeep it's great exercise it's low impact it's more efficient than walking doesn't release a bunch of pollution like cars um ride ride your bike <clears throat> grow your own food um yeah, grow your own food. Not, I mean, I can see how it can be a little intimidating if you haven't done it before, but there's lots of ways to do it, um, depending on where you live or what your context is. I mean, yeah, so grow your own food. Do some research into that. Um, you know, if there's a certain type of food that you like to eat that you can grow in your climate, try to do that. That might be a good way to get into doing that um yeah and what are some other um plane travel <laughs> it is really cool to travel in places on planes and i will still do it in the future um probably because i mean yeah i mean just just being more conscious i mean it's honestly just comes down to all this being more conscious about how, how basically almost every decision that we make in a day impacts the earth. Um, it may seem like a bit of a arduous task, just 
how I phrased it maybe, but honestly, like, we got, we got to make some big changes. We got to like really take a look at ourselves in the mirror and like, okay, like what, what can I do as an individual to not contribute to all the, all the fucked up stuff? Let's, 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 if that's going on in the world, let's be frank. Let's keep it real. There's a lot of fucked up stuff. And in my opinion, my conscience feels the best when I'm contributing to that stuff the least. Um, and also another really fascinating um, topic of this book is income. He, the author, Jim Merkel, was aiming to live on, it was about $10,000 a year or less. He's been living on that since 1990 or so and trying to get it even less. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously he has the opportunity to make much more money than that given his, you know, engineering background, that type of thing. But the more money you make, the more um, energy intensive or you might say in environmentally unfriendly way to live is going to be with the more money you make. Um, and yeah, so just by limiting your income, you also, your impact will be much less on the environment because I mean, you just have less resources to destroy the environment with basically. Um, and also, limiting your income means you don't have to work a lot so you may not have to do work that you don't enjoy or you might not have to do it as much or you get to do something that pays less but it still pays your bills because your bills are really low your expenses are really low you're able to live very um in a frugal and thoughtful way which i think is really awesome and i'm, I'm trying to adopt that as well um, and seeing how that works but anyways um, yeah I'm about let's see uh, about halfway a little man maybe over a third of the way through this book again probably do another book after I finish with some maybe more concrete permanent let's say smart goals um, to implement some kind of more of the principles that he advocates in here because right now I'm just at the part where um, he's going over the, um, the different steps to calculate exactly what your environmental footprint is by let's say um, you know how much of the planet do you how much in a percentage of the planet do you want to leave wild for the other animals and species millions of species um, and how much you want for personal consumption um, and these type of things so I'm going to go back and do that um, my footprint and then also want to go in the future document um, how much resources I'm using maybe on a weekly or monthly basis just to see how close I'm getting um, if there's maybe ways I could cut it back that type of thing but like I said I could go on for quite a while about this book so if you ever see me in person um, feel free to ask about it love it awesome um, but yeah highly recommend it um, let's all do our best let's all for the ways that work for us make these small changes because honestly like that's that's all you can that's all you can truly change in this world is yourself so lead by example be the change um, <coughs> be kind to ourselves be kind to the planet be kind to animals peace